Hey everyone, what's going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and I'm back with another exciting, spine-tingling, marrow-boiling Max MSP tutorial. This tutorial is the first tutorial of 2016. Um, you may be thinking at home, alone, in front of your computer, that this is part of some kind of New Year's type resolution thing. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Um, but I will say that certainly I was going to make some kind of commitment to going to the gym or something like that. Who? Why? I don't understand what the point of going to the gym is when you could be at home in front of your lovely glowing laptop screen opening up some max patches and these keys are easy to push man it doesn't take a lot of arm strength to get the you know to get the space bar down um, you can even turn off clicking on your tra on your trackpad and just tap it it's like uh, why would you need any muscles whatsoever um, what was I actually talking about max so max uh, 7 is here well okay so max 7 has been here um, for a while now but now max 7.1 is out and Max 7.1 has a package manager. And it's I think it's not unreasonable to say that the package manager is almost like, um, it's such a big update that it's almost like Max 8 in a small way. Because having, pack, I mean, being able to use all the other stuff that people have made, um, the externals and, and objects and stuff that people in the Max community have made um, is a huge part of being able to use the software itself. So the fact that they're now actually rolled up... The package manager, I just want to say, has always been one of those pie-in-the-sky features that, you know, uh, five years ago, I would say, oh man, wouldn't it be great if Max had a package manager and somebody at Cycling74 would say, yeah, that sure would be great with a knowing twinkle in their eye like it would never happen. But here it is. It, it happened. So um, let's let's plunge. Let's you and me, um, let's plunge together into a bold, new, vibrating world of Max and check out some of these packages. I'm going to start with uh, Siphon. Um, and incidentally, this is uh, how you use the package manager. You go up to File, Show Package Manager, and then it will show itself. Uh, you click on the package you want. You go to this little page. It tells you what you need to install it. Um, Siphon requires a Mac. It's a Mac-only plugin, unfortunately, or external or package or whatever. Um, unfortunately, it has to do with the way um, the hardware works, actually. Um, so what is Siphon? Back up for a second. Siphon is the greatest. It's a set of tools that, or it's just an application that lets um, programs share graphics. So one program can be a, a video or, or a graphics um, server. Others can be clients. And you send audio from servers, or pff, audio, video. You send video from, from, from servers to clients. So it's a bit like um, Soundflower, but for video. And better, uh, because it's more reliable and faster and there isn't as much distortion. Um, it's really cool. So anyway, the thing to do is push this install button. And then look at that. It's successfully installed. No, no downloading packages and putting them into maybe the Cycling74 application folder, maybe into your package directory, maybe into... Who, who not, it's just done. It's done. And now we have Siphon. It's very exciting. So now we can make a new patch. I'm just going to close this window now that it's installed. I'm going to make an object called jit.gl.siphon client and what jit.gl.siphon client does is lets you suck up video from other applications that happen to be siphon servers and if you option click on this siphon object to show the help file you can get a basic sense of how it works um, it's very similar to using a jit.gl.grab object in that you send it bangs to make it output frames you can send it this get available servers message and it will populate down here with the different servers that you can listen to um, or applications that you can listen to and then you get a what well, you actually get a GL texture out and we'll see in a second how that changes things um, but anyway that's really all you need to do to get jit.gl that siphon client working so we've got a siphon client here but what we don't have is a video source um, this is the client, so it's going to take video rather than spit it out. So let's open up. A, you may or may not have this program. It's free, so you very easily could get it. But it turns out that um, OpenEMU, which is an application for playing um, video games, old, it has a bunch of emulators for different uh, systems, happens to be a Siphon server, just because why not, right? 
Um, so I'm gonna load up this game, maybe you've heard of it, it's called Mega Man 3. Um, it's, mm, I don't know, more or less the greatest game ever made. Um, I used to play this game all the time when I was uh, just, a, just a celery stock. And um, I heard some rumors about uh, maybe a, a different Mega, maybe a better Mega Man game um, coming out later, but uh, I don't, I don't think that's likely. I think this is probably as good as it, as good as it got. So anyway, um, here's the game over here, and what you can actually do, which is pretty great, uh, here in Max, what we need to do is make a Q Metro. Uh, give it an argument like 33, which is 60 frames a second. Let's make a toggle. And this, for anybody who's done graphics stuff in Max, this should be pretty familiar. We need a jit.window. Here's our window. And I'm gonna do this thing that you do sometimes. Uh, so let's just do a key object that reports key presses, cell 27. This sends out a bang whenever we push the key whose numerical value is 27, which happens to be escape. So here's me pushing the escape key. Let's put a toggle, and then under that, um, full screen, dollar one. And now, uh, you can make this go full screen, very exciting. Okay, so now to actually get the video frames, let's make a toggle, give it the arguments bang, erase, bang, or B, erase, B. Attach one bang to JITGL siphon client, and let's make a JIT.GL.render and attach the erase to the JITGL render and the bang to the JITGL render. And now finally, let's make a JIT.GL.VideoPlane object and connect the output of JITGL siphon client to JITGL video plane. And that, my dear friends, or we could do one more thing. We could do uh, this is, we could do, you know what, we'll drop into JIT GL video plane and add an attribute at transform underscore reset um, two. And what this does is, uh, so the JIT GL video plane is a plane that exists in the three dimensional world that we've created by making a JIT GL render object. Um, but uh, we don't want the plane to be in the world. We just want it to be stuck right in front of the camera. So that's what this at transform reset to does. And now if we flip the switch, oh my God, it's Mega Man inside my max patch. I can't even believe it. I'm beyond speech. I'm simply overwhelmed. I couldn't be more whelmed if I tried. So there's Mega Man looking around. Um, I guess that's pretty exciting seeing that work like that. Um, and just to, you know, there's, there's, you could try, uh, the reason you need this video plane here is that what comes out of jit.gl siphon client is a texture. So it's an image rather than uh, something, rather than a matrix. Um, so you need to put it onto uh, some kind of jitter, uh, some kind of OpenGL surface in order to see it. But, uh, but there it is. Um, so that's pretty nifty. Um, I don't think we really want it on a video plane though. This is pretty boring. Um, let's do something like jit.gl.grid shape at shape cube, maybe. And let's throw this onto this cube. Uh, I think we're zoomed way too far in. So let's do jit.gl.handle and attach that to the grid shape object. And now if we go back to the window, option dragging zooms us out and then just regular dragging should, ro yeah, look at that, the mega cube. Okay, um, and lastly, it's looking a little dingy, um, but we can fix, it. that's because the default cube color is gray and it's mixing the cube color with um, the gray color with the, you know, the bright, uh, beautiful color coming from OpenAMU. So we can just do, color one, 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 one. Uh, and now it's nice and bright. Um, although of course it doesn't have to, I mean, why white? We could also do like a uh, swatch and then color on our like prepend color. And now, yeah, look, you can make the mega cube different. <laughs> you can make the mega cube different mega colors. That's pretty neat. 
And I guess if you want it to be really cool, you can change the blend mode, right? How do you do that? Uh, let's see. Get... No, stop it. Control click to see the attributes. Uh, blend mode. Blend mode is currently 6, 7, but we can make it like... This is not having the effect. I think this is to do with alpha rather than... Um, how do you do... Uh, I'm really, I'm gonna be really embarrassed if I can't make this work, but so it goes. Mm. Oh, blend enable needs to be on probably. Okay, and now can I change these? Yes, oh my God, such, wow, that's the niftiest. Oh my God. Look at, oh, I'm really happy about this transparent mega cube. That's a place I wanna be. I want to be a part of this. So, uh, finally, you know, we can just play Mega Man. Um, or actually, maybe I should... Um, maybe I should... One last thing that might be cool uh, is rotating the cube looks cool, but I don't want to rotate it by hand. That's super annoying. So let's make an object like jit.anim.drive. This lets you have automatic animations attached to your objects. And let's give this the message turn or trun turn 0 0.1, 0 0.04, 0 0.03, for example. And this will start the cube a spinning. This is pretty good. Uh, yes. Okay. I am not displeased with this. And then you can just basically, you know, play Mega Man. Uh, so like if we switch back to OpenEMU. And this I think is basically the dream, right? Is that you could just go, you take this to the, you take this out to the club and then you're, you know, you're doing your VJ set or whatever. And it looks like you're doing something really important related to like making the show actually happen or something. But in fact, you're just, you know, you're hanging out playing Mega Man. It's the American dream. Um, Oh, weird, there must have been like alpha in the, good, that's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay, so anyway, um, there you go. It's uh, getting some exciting, um, oh, what is happening in this cube? Okay. Um, so there you go, it's uh, Mega Man on the Mega Cube, um, getting a look at how the Siphon client works, um, which is, you know, a pretty, um, or the, how the, the, how the new package manager works inside Max. Um, just a quick look at how the Siphon one works, but we can go into a little more detail next time maybe. Um, but for now, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something useful. I'll go ahead and throw this patch up in case you want to download it. And um, yeah, uh, good luck with your own Max endeavors and happy patching. I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.